because we're on Minnesota State lockdown uh, today. So we're calling this the lockdown episode. How are you doing today, Andy? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How about yourself? Very good. Very good. I'm excited to do this. This is episode number 20, and uh, we're trying a new format. So hang with us. Uh, we'll try this out today. We'll do a live stream, see how this works, and we'll go through the same uh, sports, music, album review, all that jazz as we did before. But uh, we're trying to do some social distancing here uh, with the uh, with the coronavirus. And, and so we're doing this separate from our own homes, uh, separate studios, rather. And with the sports lockdown right now, with everything cut down, instead of a weekly episode, it'll probably be about once every 10 to 15 days, you'll see an episode come up. Try to get more stuff in there, a little longer episodes, but they won't be as frequent until everything gets going again. Yeah, that's, that's good. And so we'll do the same format as before. I think the other thing is if we do this live streaming going forward, it'll be fun because on Facebook, uh, folks will be able to see this come up on the notification and chat real time. So we'll try this out. This will be our first little guinea pig, but we're calling this episode number 20, Lockdown. So welcome if there's anyone here uh, joining us. So we'll start off first with the sports segment of the show Andy, do you have anything for, for high school sports? I got no high school sports at all to report today. How about you? Well, here's what I've got. No sports, but what I found interesting is the signing dates. You know, we're in spring here. Yep. Uh, signing dates for juniors and seniors are usually big time as far as signing letters of intent, national oh. letters of intent, those kind of things. And I did see that for Division One and Two football, they're, they're uh, temporarily suspending it. They're pushing that back. Uh, uh, the signing date. The, the, there's an initial signing date for the players and a final signing date. So far, they're just temporarily suspending it um, right now until April 15th. So usually we'll see that in the news or the sports segments, you know, people signing, high school athletes signing. Um, all other Division One and Two sports are also suspended until April 15th. So we're not going to be hearing any big news that way because there's no spring sports and the winter sports are done. Um, the only thing that was that was interesting for me is the initial signing date for division one basketball. Now this is, this is for next winter basketball for college. They can sign initial signing dates begin April 15th. They can start uh, signing their initial letter of intent. Final date stays the same. It's still going to be March. I mean, May 20th. And so that's really all it, all it is that I've got for high school sports is the timing with all this shutdown impacts the signing dates and those people the, the, the ever popular student athletes sitting at the table with their parents or the coach signing the paperwork and getting their uh, photo op uh, done. Some of those have been revealing which hat they're going to wear for that college. What hat, uh, what cap, what jersey, all that, all that fun stuff. But I've got nothing else for high school sports. Yeah, I just got a couple college bits here, uh, kind of speaking of signing in a way. Daniel college section too when you're done, but, but go ahead. Yeah, Daniel Turu of the Gophers, he has decided to go to the NBA draft. Whenever that's going to be, um, that's still kind of up in the air. Um, and also, Bemidji State University goalie Zach Driscoll is one of 10 finalists for the Mike Richter Award, which is given out to the top goalie in Division One NCAA hockey. Um, so, Zach Driscoll, Bemidji State Beavers, up for award for top goalie in all of college hockey. So, uh, good luck to him. I'd like to see a local boy get one of those. It'd be kind of nice. And kind of on the same idea of the college and the pros, I've heard a lot of stuff about the drafts coming up for all the pro sports. How uh, I know Major League Baseball kind of does theirs on MLB Network. Kind of looks like a conference almost with all these uh, team owners and reps in there. And some of the big name guys come in that are drafted. NFL sounds like they're going to kind of do the same thing. Only it's just going to be like a big conference room. Everybody's six feet apart and no players, no photo ops. For now, that's how they plan on doing it. We'll see what happens, though. And... Uh, Kind of on the same line as college and pro, I was reading yesterday, uh, of the XFL teams, there was eight of them. Total eight. Total eight signing, did you say? Andy, you're froze up, I think. We're still recording. Andy, you're froze up. Uh, 
12 players have signed to the NFL contracts already. Really? So that is good. That is good stuff. Um, I've got one note for college sports. Speaking of goalies, Division I goalie, a, a shout out to Mr. Darian Hansen, plays for Union College in Schenectady, New York, uh, finishes junior season. He's a local guy, played high school hockey as a goalie for St. Francis. Went on um, their, uh, their team this year did not do too well, but when teams do not do too well, the goalie gets some very impressive stats. Mr. Uh, Darian Hansen finished second in all of Division I hockey goalies with a number of saves this year. He certainly was kept busy with 1,007 saves on the season. Uh, that is an awful lot. So he finished second overall in Division I and finished third overall in Division I for minutes played for goaltenders. So a shout out to uh, Mr. Darian. Uh, his season, will, he'll start his senior year uh, next year. Um, so local, local, uh, local athlete there. What else have we got for pro sports, Andy? I just um, I've got some stuff here. Uh, some uh, mid league baseball pitchers uh, going in for Tommy John surgery since there's a delay in the season. Um, Noah Syndergaard of the Mets is going in for Tommy John surgery. Sounds like he hurt his arm in their last game, so it wasn't something he was trying to tough it through, see if he can make a season. I don't think it was the last game of the season he uh, pulled something there, so he'll be out for the 12 to 16 months or 12 to 18 months. We'll see how that goes for him. So good luck to Noah Syndergaard and getting back and healthy. Some people are kind of saying, last couple of years, Noah's gotten really big. He's really been hitting the weights real hard, so maybe that had something to do with it. The fact he throws everything close to 95 to 100 miles an hour might have something to do with it. We'll see how that goes, but good luck to Noah Syndergaard. Hopefully he could uh, come back from this and be the Syndergaard he was before. Also, uh, Chris Sale of the Red Sox is also going in for Tommy John surgery, so he'll be out for a while too. I wouldn't be surprised if we see other players do this, also other sports. Uh, with basketball and hockey kind of calling it a season, they still want to do playoffs calling the season. Some of these guys don't go for their year-end surgeries now just to get it done with. Uh, speaking of the Red Sox, there's a little fun fact. They're paying $80 million between six players that won't even suit up for them this year. Uh, Chris Sale, they're paying $30 million a year, and he's having the Tommy John surgery. David Price is still getting $16 million from them, and he's with the Dodgers now. Uh, Castile and Dustin Pedroia, uh, 14 and 13 million plus, and that's all the signing bonus money. They're gone, but it's guaranteed money, so it's still prorated out to them. Uh, Pablo Sandoval still getting five million dollars. Um, I think it's because when he was traded, it was part of the trade, they'd pick up that part of his contract. And Manny Ramirez is still getting two million plus a year through the year 2026. He kind of signed one of those Bobby Bonilla contracts where you get paid throughout for, or for extension there. But so those are the news on notes I got on baseball right now. Um, do you have anything? No, well, I've got nothing for uh, nothing for baseball at all. I do have NFL football. I'm not sure if you're interested or not, but uh, as you know, I'm wearing a yeah, go ahead. Rams. They announced their new logo this season. They announced their new logo coming up, and let me let me see if I can find it here. Uh, They've got a new logo. There, there's the logo. L.A. Rams, new logo coming up for the new season. They're going to be playing in that brand new stadium there outside of Inglewood, California. That has uh, they've been spending the last two years building that stadium, and that's uh, done, ready to go. The uh, they were playing in that smaller, uh, boy, a soccer arena last year for the for the Rams. Now that'll be their new home. So they're getting a new stadium. Um, new logo, and the Raiders will be playing in a new stadium as well out in Vegas, but their logo uh, has stayed the same. So that's really all I've got for for uh, sports. Oh, here we go. Here's the other logo. Sorry, missed it. The uh, Here's the rest of the Lamb, Rams logo. So uh, for those interested, my hat that I'm wearing on my head right now as we speak is the old version. And so that's all I've got for uh, sports. What else, Andy? Anything else for you? Let's do that. Let's do the uh, sports history section segment of the show. All right, here we go. 
This week in sports history, we'll start with March 22nd. 2011, Lawrence Taylor of the New York Giants pleads guilty to misdemeanors of sexual misconduct and is sentenced to six years in prison. Funny, he does all that, and the NFL still put him in the Hall of Fame. Uh, birthdays for this date, March 22nd. 1952, Bob Costas of uh, NBC Sports and the Olympics and stuff. He's got a birthday. March 23rd, the Florida Marlins started selling season tickets in 1992 on this date. That's when they all started. And in 2016, Joe Gargiola, former catcher and sports broadcaster, passed away at the age of 90. March 24th, 1961, New York State Senate approved $55 million for a baseball stadium in Flushing Meadows, which would be what we came to know as Shea Stadium, where the Mets played for a few years. March 24th, birthdays, 1976, Peyton Manning was born. So happy birthday to Peyton Manning back then. March 27th, uh, there is one sad death to report. Uh, Minnesota sports fans will recognize this voice. Ladies and gentlemen, Major League Baseball rules prohibit fans from going on the playing field or interfering with the ball and plane. Fans seated in the box seats adjacent to the playing field are asked to please remove their wraps from the railing. And the fans in the outfield section, please do not throw anything or any money back at the playing field. Smoking in this stadium is not allowed. No smoking in the Metrodome. No throwing fans on the field, remember that. And no smoking. That was Bob Casey, uh, Twins announcer, passed away in 2005, uh, age of 80. March 28, 1963, the AFL's New York Titans changed their name to the New York Jets. And you hear that sometimes old school announcers refer to them as the Titans or when they have the old logos come out, they use the Titan logos. But uh, – that's what happened for sports history. Also, I saw yesterday Curly Neal, the Globetrotters, passed away. So uh, add that to our This Week in Music History as of yesterday. Curly Neal passed. I remember uh, the Globetrotters as a kid watching. They were kind of a staple on uh, wide world of sports all the time and watching the Globetrotters. And Curly Neal was, if you don't remember him, he was the bald guy who did the fancy dribbling all the time. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Curly Neal. And that's what I got for uh, sports history. I got to This Week in Music History before we go into uh, – your album of the week there, Dan, uh, for, for music history, March 22nd. Now, for those of you who listened last week or didn't, go back and listen to last week's show. Catch up on the rules for the sports and songs drinking game. Very important to know. Music history, March 22nd, 1980. Pink Floyd tops the top 100 with Another Brick in the Wall Part 2, which stays there for a total of four weeks. It's the rare hit single of the band, whose only other top 40 appearance was Money, which hit number 13 in 1973. So Pink Floyd finally kind of breaking through there. Uh, 1986, I don't know if this will come up later on or not. Just came up. March 22, 1986, Hearts These Dreams. It's number one in the U.S. The lyric is written by Elton John's songwriter, Bernie Tupin, or Tuppin. So Elton John's songwriter get, makes some extra cash right for the people. Uh, 1936, uh, Roger Whitaker was born, country singer. From back in the day, I remember my folks was, listened to him a lot. Um, Roger Whitaker, born 1936 on this date. March 23rd, 1985, Billy Joel marries Christy Brinkley, and they remained married for nine years. Uh, 1992, Billy Ray Cyrus's Achy, Achy Breaky Heart. God, that hurts to say. Uh, became a signature song and starts the line dancing craze in the U.S. So 1992, that started. 1983, here I thought this was very interesting. ZZ Top releases their album Eliminator which features Billy Gibbons' custom hot rod on the cover. Everybody remembers that album cover. Thanks to the videos of Give Me All Your Love and Sharp Just Man and Legs featured the car and various females in there. They became unlikely MTV stars, earning them a new generation of fans because ZZ Top was kind of hitting the end of their career. MTV came along. They got a nice little shot in the arm for a few more years and a few more thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. 1944, Rico Casca of the Cars is born. Um, it's kind of controversial on that they, his birth date often refers as March 23rd, 1949, because that's what he often claimed. But records actually show he was born in 1944. So five-year difference on his age there for Rick. And March 24th, 1958, Elvis Presley goes to the Memphis Draft Board and enters the U.S. Army. So Elvis was in the Army, got his haircut, played by the rules for everybody else. 1986, the 58th Academy Awards in Los Angeles. Lionel Richie wins the Oscar for Best Original Song on a Track, Say You, Say Me, from the movie White Knight. 
The song appeared three on three different Billboard charts, but didn't appear on the soundtrack of the movie, which Lionel Richie later put on later on his Dancing in the Ceiling album. March 25th, 1942, Aretha Franklin was born in Memphis, Tennessee. And on March 25th, 2006, country musician Buck Owens passed away of a heart attack at the age of 76. 1947, Elton John, born, born Reginald Keith Dwight, was born in Middlesex, England. His stage name, taken at age 20, came from two band members of a band, Bluesology, Elton Dean and Long John Bradley. So kind of things they have to do for people, but Elton John, 1947, March 25th has a birthday. Happy birthday, Sir Elton. 1966 blues rocker Jeff Healy uh, was born in Canada. Jeff Healy, blues rocker, uh, blind. He sat sat down playing the guitar. You can see him. He was also in the movie uh, Roadhouse. He's a musician in that one. If you want to know who Jeff Healy is. March 26, 1955, Eric Wright, also known as Easy e passed away of AIDS-related complications at the age of 31. 1949, actress singer Vicki Lawrence was born. 1948, March 26th, Steven Tyler is born in New York. He becomes the lead singer of Aerosmith and a judge on American Idol later on. So that's what Steven Tyler has been known for doing. March 27th, Sammy Hagar makes his first appearance as Van Halen's lead singer when the group begins their tour in Louisiana. 2006, Graceland, Elvis Presley's Graceland Mansion is designated as a National Historic Landmark. 1970, March 26th, Mariah Carey is born. March 28th. Here's, here's an interesting one for you, Danny, but you didn't know this one. 1978, Alice Cooper appears on The Muppet Show, where it performs Welcome to My Nightmare and School's Out. He also offers to give the Muppets fame and riches if they sign their souls over to him. Kermit is horrified. Gonzo spends the entire episode looking for a pen. And 1955, March 28th, Reba McIntyre has a birthday. That's all I got there, sir. How about your album of the week? Well, I got the album of the week. This week is uh, Little Queen by Heart, 1977 band uh, Heart. Their album release was Little Queen. I'm going to show it up here uh, on the screen. And there we go, 1977, released May 14th. And this is a good one. I have yet to review any uh, band, any albums, I should say, by, by Heart. Uh, this was their second studio album by American rock band Heart. Released by Portrait Records, uh, it was mixed and recorded at K. Smith Studios in Seattle. Uh, many will remember that new name recently it was called Bad Animals Studio. And so this was interesting. There's several reasons I picked this album. Number one, I liked it. Uh, it was good. It's got Barracuda. It's got Love Alive, The Sylvan Song, Dream of the Archer, and Kick It Out, all on side one of the cassette. Side two is Little Queen, Treat Me Well. Say hello, cry to me, and go on. And this, uh, this very good stuff here. Very good. Remember, their first album was called Dreamboat Annie, released. Uh, that had the image of the heart on it. It was released Valentine's Day, the year uh, 1975. And then the interesting thing is, is the song Barracuda. Now, everyone knows the song Barracuda, right? Uh, they, they know that one. Very popular. That uh, was released on this on this album. But the reason that was released is they had an issue with their record label. Record label for Heart when they first started was Mushroom Mushroom Records. Uh, kind of a small rinky dink operation out of Canada. Wanted to become big, and so they started exploiting. Um, they released their very first album. Heart did. Heart did, and what they did was uh, their first album, Dreamboat Annie, did so well it went platinum. And so, what was released in the newspaper was, and uh, on the music trade journal, trade journal was this this image right there. They were so proud that this band made it a million records and sold out. Uh, and, and did so well, uh, went platinum on a debut album that they released this image along with the, the brand new, here I'll find it here, um, they, they took out a full page in Rolling Stone magazine, touting the band's success using the headline, Million to One Shot Sells a Million. 
The ad cover looked something like a tabloid newspaper that included a photo of the Dreamboat Annie cover shoot. The caption read, Hart's Wilson sisters confess it was only our first time, leading many to believe, as they were uh, allegedly, uh, you couldn't see much of the top, it looked as if they were topless here, leading them to make uh, people, folks, believe that they were lesbians, uh, the sisters were lesbians, really got the two pissed off. Um, Hart uh, sisters Anna and Nancy Wilson got pissed off. They're certainly not that. They were, in fact, dating other members of the band. They went back to their hotel room and recorded or wrote down the lyrics to the song Barracuda. Barracuda is really a song about the nastiness and the slime balls in the music industry. And so when that, uh, they were busy writing that, and then they wanted to switch. The Hart sisters wanted to switch record labels and move over to a record label called, here I've got to find it here, Portrait Records. Well, Mushroom Records, the sleazeballs who announced the photo there on the, on the right, along with the tabloid type of things, says, oh no, we've got a record deal for two records. Our contract says two records. Well, Hart didn't want to deal with these guys anymore. Mushroom didn't want to deal with Hart. And so the five songs that they had re uh, recorded in preliminary version, not final, not clean cut version, but preliminary, Mushroom Records went out and released it without their knowledge, without their doing. They threw in a cover song, they threw in two live performances and released an album called, the album was called Magazine. So they released the album Magazine in 1977 because they had a contract to release two albums. Hart did not approve of this, but later on had to go to a judge to determine because this case went to court. And so Hart returned. They were free to sign to a new label if they wanted to, and which they did after releasing their third album essentially was uh, Little Queen. But according to the judge, they had to, uh, they were free to join a new label, but they had to uh, re release the album Hold Magazine. So they went in back to a studio in Seattle, finalized, finalized the deal, and um, was basically able to re-record on a four-day marathon session the other songs and were able to get this out. Once they got that out, they were, there was a court-ordered guard standing nearby to prevent the master tapes from being erased in the studio sessions to get this out. So they released it called Magazine. Later, this slimy company, I'll call it, Mushroom Records, went under and Capital bought them out. Uh, Capital then re-released this Little Queen along with the, uh, the uh, not, not Little Queen, I'm sorry, the magazine album after uh, doing some re recuts on that and so because they had the first album out was still on the charts at the time magazine was out also on the top 100 charts because that ended up going platinum as well and then little queen the album that the image they're showing in the middle went triple platinum they had the distinction of having all three albums on the charts simultaneously any uh, thoughts on that, Andy? I know you're a bit of a heart fan I, yourself, but yeah. you know some of this uh, stuff. Yes. Uh, big Nancy Wilson fan. I enjoy her work as a guitarist. Um, I know a lot of other artists have also. Ann Wilson, great, great vocalist. Uh, I've seen her do stuff at Kennedy Center Honors. Uh, Ann Wilson did a thing, a tribute to uh, Zeppelin, and she did Stairway to Heaven, and to see them up there just taken away by her version of it was if you ever look up on YouTube, great rendition of it. Uh, Nancy Wilson, they still, her and Ann still tour together, the two of them. I don't know if they use the name Hart or if they use Wilson sisters or Ann and Nancy Wilson, how they label themselves when they go out. Uh, but they still are out there every now and then still, still plucking away, still sounding great. They're, uh, they weren't, they were that borderline, you know, when, when hard rock was kind of becoming cool, but there were still rock and roll bands and, but rock and roll bands, a lot of guitarists at that time, Go back to Nancy Wilson as an influence. So she's very respected in the industry. Yeah, and like you said, uh, Ann, Ann Wilson was the, uh, the singer. Nancy Wilson played uh, electric guitar and acoustic. 
Roger Fisher was on lead guitar. Howard Lease also did a couple tracks on lead guitar. And Steve Fossen on the bass. And drummer was Michael DeRosier. Um, this album was interesting, but you're right. Cal uh, Hart got started, you know, basically uh, was the was the Fossen and the Fisher brothers. Roger and Mike Fisher formed the band with Steve Fossen, who played bass, and the band was called, in 1963, this, this group was called Army. Now, it didn't have much of a following. They went to Hocus Pocus. That name, kind of cheesy. Then they went to White Hart. The band okay. went to White Hart. Um, got Ann Wilson involved at that point. Uh, they changed it. They stripped out White Hart, just calling themselves Hart. Later added Nancy Wilson, but that wasn't until 1974. And so she was uh, added later. And then these albums started coming out in 76. They're a debut under Hart. 77 was Little Queen. Magazine was 77, reissued uh, again in 1978. And then Dog and Butterfly came out later. So that was all very interesting. And like I said earlier, the members of the band, Ann and Nancy, were dating the Fisher brothers. Right. Roger I was going to say, Nancy's still married to the one. Uh, Roger Fisher was, was was dating Nancy Wilson at the time. Uh, they ended up breaking up in 1978, and then he later left the band in 1979. But Mike Fisher, the original Magic Man, uh, that's yes. the song Magic Man was written about Mike Fisher. That was uh, who Ann Wilson was um, dating. And so very interesting um, – very interesting stuff there. Uh, I always get a kick out of looking at the old Hart stuff because they went to Canada at the time and, and uh, were recording. Uh, before they were big, they were in Calgary doing a lot of Led Zeppelin cover songs. They were very good cover songs yeah. way back uh, uh, covering Led Zeppelin. And now you see a lot of their Led Zeppelin cover stuff coming into the mix today. But they were started off in Calgary, downtown Calgary, in a nightclub called uh, Lucifer's Nightclub. That's where they got their start, the and then just found too. decided to head back if they were basically broke and penniless, went into uh, just south of uh, uh, Vancouver and just north of Seattle near the border and became Hart, did the recording, went on to become very successful in Seattle. They are now in the Music Hall of Fame, the both of them, and um, very good success story, but uh, very interesting connections there with the band Hart and the album that went triple platinum. Little Queen. Very Anything nice. else uh, for this day in, day in music? Or we covered basically got all that covered, right? That's that's about it. Um, like I said no concert stuff. Date everybody's canceling everything because of uh, the lockdown and the issues. I know a lot of the summer festival concerts are still the ones in July. They're still scheduling them right now. No one's officially canceled anything. A lot of concerts. If you do have something that's up and canceled, hold your tickets. Get a hold of the venue and ask them if they're honoring them for a later date or if the show's ever been canceled altogether they might reschedule so hold your tickets i don't say andy said but i'm pretty sure they'll guarantee your money back if they do up and cancel it but they'll honor your ticket for a rescheduled date perfect well that's all i've got remember to leave your comments below we're gonna because it's a live stream we're also going to push it up and uh be able to uh watch it for those folks later on on both facebook and on the youtube but uh stay safe everybody we're in lockdown and thanks for joining us for well uh, episode number 20 here on Lockdown, Andy. We'll see you, see you next week. See you next time, yep.